Hello and welcome to another Digimedia Pros tutorial. I'm your host Marcelo Lewin. Today I'd like to welcome Victor Paredes, an animator and journalist from Chile. He is currently the product manager of Moho 2D animation software at Smith Micro Software. Victor, welcome to the Digimedia Pros tutorial series. Hello. Today you're going to show us how to quickly create an animated head turn inside of Moho Pro 12 using the Smart Bones feature. But before we jump into that, we'd like to know how did you get into animation? I have been animating for 12 years now. Uh, I studied journalism, but actually what I really liked was to animate. So I started animating by myself and then I started to ser seriously uh, learn from books and different uh, resources from the internet. Then I started to work professionally as an animator and now I am working um, in the development of this uh, Moho software uh, as product manager. So that is mostly how I started. When you say you work professionally, did you work on television shows or movies or...? I have worked in television shows, in shorts, and music videos, spots, different kind of animation like that. What's your favorite to work on? I think music videos is very fun to work with, uh, but I also like to work in shorts, especially when they are very short because you, you can finish <laughs> them quickly and, and you don't uh, lose the fun to animate. It can be very tedious sometimes to animate, right? Yeah, like in any work, it takes too long. You, you don't have the same energy or it is harder to keep the same energy for a longer project. But I, I think it is anyway, it, it is always fun uh, in short or, or, or longer projects, but I prefer the short ones. Well, this is uh, the beginning of, of a series of tutorials where you're going to show us some animation techniques. So I know you're ready uh, to show us the first one here, how to quickly create an animated head turn. So I'm going to send it off to you. Go ahead and uh, take over. And then if I have any questions, I'll jump in. Okay, so I am using Moho 12 here. And I have this character. And this character is created with vector tools. That means this character is created using different points. So I can modify the points here and the curvature, the color, and everything. Um, this character was designed and created inside of Moho, but if you know any other software like Illustrator or maybe Corel Draw or Inkscape, you can uh, save that character as SVG files and import them directly into Moho. So you have different ways to uh, create your characters. Now, once you put your character inside of the scene here in Moho 12, um, we have the vector layer here. And what I want to create is a bone layer. This software works with bones, and we control the characters using the bones. So I will go here to this button, and we'll create a bone layer. And now I will drag the cut head inside of the bone layer. Okay, so a bone layer is like a group, and that group contains the vector layer, which is the uh, cut head. Now, if I go to the bone layer, if I select this, I can see here the bone tools. So I will use this one, which is the add bone tool, and I will create a couple bones just to show you how it works. So if I create one and two bones here, and now I will be using the manipulate bone tool, which is here to test what I am doing. You can see I can bend the character. So this is a very basic way to read, okay? But now for this tutorial, we will be using a, a smart bone. And a smart bone is a different kind of bone, bone where you can save animation inside of it. Uh, it. It could sound complex, but it is actually very simple. So what I will do is to go to the bone selection tool. And I will I will click over the workspace here to unselect the bones. And now I will go to the add bone tool and create a new bone here. This bone has a name. So it is called automatically, the software calls it B3 but I will call it head turn, okay? 
So now I will go to the bone selection tool again. I have this bone selected and I will tell the software to show the label of this bone. So you can see now this bone is called Heter. Okay. And now there is another tool here, which is the bone strength tool. And you can see this uh, shape here on all these bones. This shape is used uh, to move the point of a character. But in this case, I don't want to move any point of the character with this bone. So what I will do is to drag the mouse over this bone to the left to reduce this shape to zero. Okay, so now this bone is not moving any point. Okay, now once I do that, I can go to the window menu and open the actions window. So I open this one and now I have the actions window here. And I will create a new action. And a, a new action is just a piece of animation. So I will create a new action here. And the action automatically will have the, the same name of the bone I have selected. In this case, it is head turn. And I will press OK. So now you can see the timeline here has a different color. And that means I am editing the action. I am not in the main line. I am not in the real animation. I am inside of this action. So now I will simply take uh, this cursor here and move it until uh, second five here. Okay. And now I will rotate using the uh, transform bone tool. I will rotate this bone to the left. So basically what I will tell the software is that every time this bone rotates to the left, I want the points of the cut to move in certain way. So what I will do is to select, for instance, I will select, um, let me select the lasso mode. I am select using the select point tool here. So I will select the points of the cut. And now with the transform point tool, I will move them to the left of the screen. And I will zoom here and now we'll start modifying the rest of the points. So I can modify the points one by one. So for instance, I will move all this and also I will select the other eye and move it again to the left. And maybe I can make more zoom here. And now I will select the nose and move the nose to the left because I want to simulate the cut is rotating. Okay, and I will do the same with the eyes and all the points of the eyes here. So you can see I am just moving the points and I can make the same with the ears. So I will modify the shape of the ears and we'll do the same with the other ear. And once I do that, I can also modify the curvature of the point. So I will go to the curvature tool here. And you can see I have the handles of this point. So I can modify the handles to modify the curvature. So if I press Alt here, I can modify only one handle. Okay, and maybe I want this. Okay, so once I am okay with the movement I am creating, I can test it in the in the timeline. So if I move here in the timeline, you can see how the cut is rotating. So I can continue modifying. Whoops, I can continue modifying the shapes here to get a better result and the cut will be moving. So now if I go back to the main line, so to do that, I will double click here in main line. So you can see now the, the timeline has its normal color. And now 
what I did was that I told the software that every time I rotate this bone to the left, the cat uh, will rotate, rotate the head. So now I can animate my cat that way. So if I move the cursor here in the timeline, I can create an animation of that head turn. So I don't need to touch the points anymore. I could, but I don't need to. So now I have this animation and I can combine the different bones to create different anim animation with this. So I have a question for you, Victor. The head turn bone that you put in there, right? That's attached to the cat object now. So if you wanted, if you introduce a new, let's say character, you introduce a mouse, you would create a new head turn and maybe call it head turn mouse. And you, you can, so you can attach them to different characters? Right. Right now, I have only one bone layer and one layer inside of this bone layer. In this software, normally, one bone layer means there is one character here. If I want to create a second character, I will have to create a second bone layer. For instance, here, I can call this mouse. So now I have a different character here. So I have, I will rename this cat. Okay, so now I have cat and mouse. And depending of which layer I have selected, I will see the bones of one character or the bones of the other. And I also notice that when you switch the mouse or the cat, your actions are tied to that layer itself. And that's where exactly. you're doing that controlling. Yeah, okay, yes. that makes sense. You can see here, to create a smart, uh, a smart bone action is very simple. And now if I want to make the cut to rotate to the other side, I can simply select again the cut bone layer, se select again the bone head turn and create a new action. So now you can see the software automatically name this action at, as head turn space two. Okay, so you can have two actions for each bone, one, one to rotate it to the left and the other to rotate it to the right. So I can create the second part of the action. So I will tell the software the same, but this time to the other side. I will tell every time this bone rotates to the right, the point of this cut will move to the right. So I, I will try to make this uh, quickly. So this is almost like a mini animation timeline within the object itself that then you can use in your main timeline. Right, exactly. Right. So you can save, you can use actions for several tasks. Uh, for instance, you can save a walk cycle of your character inside of an action and then reuse it in any way you want. But you can also create a smart box with this. So right. yeah, basically it's like a different track of animation, so. But you can't really use actions of one bone and put in another bone. They're not really reusable like that because they're attached really to your character, right? To to the points yeah. that you're manipulating. Exactly, I mean, if the, if the cat and the mouse, for instance, will be very similar, for instance, I don't know, maybe the mouse has the same setup, but the ears are more in this way. I don't know, so maybe if, if they are very similar and they use the same points, the same amount and the same position, maybe I can create a, a mouse with this. Actually, right now I, I created a transformation from cat to mouse <laughs> in some way. But so you can have, I'm assuming, multiple bones. One could be a head turn, another one could be a walk, another one could be transformed from mouse, from cat to mouse. I mean, you know, it could exactly. be a, whatever. And then you use exactly. those bones to do your animation in the main timeline. Right. For instance, um, I can create a second bone here, and let's suppose I will call this color. So I will name it color, and now I will show the label again, create the action, and now I will tell the software that every time the bone color rotates to the right, the color of the cat will change, I don't know, to... Okay, to green. So now I have a green cut. So I go back to the main line, and now I can animate the head turn, but also the color. So I can combine the, that two animations 
together. And I can also move the bones of the cat itself. So I can still bend the cat and combine it with the other bones. So this is a great way to have like two people work on a project where one is creating the animation of the characters while the other one is actually creating the scene, animating the characters. Right. Yeah. Usually in this project, you work, there is some people who create the characters and the rigs and the bones. And then there is another person who creates the animation using that already created rig. So yeah, you can work with teams. And also if your characters are similar together, you can share different actions between different characters. Well, this was a, a great tutorial. Thank you uh, for showing it to us. Now, if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about you, how can they do that? They can contact me in my YouTube channel. The channel name is in Spanish. It is called Taza Triste, Sad Cap. You can Google also Victor Paredes Mojo and, and you will find me. Well, thanks again, Victor. And to the rest of you, please remember to check out more of our tutorials, videos, podcasts, practice assets, and articles at digimediapros.com. So until the next tutorial, I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.